I show. Of course, absolutely happy to help. So I never expected that uh, I'll get a appointment of yours, and uh, I, I'm going to talk with you. I saw your profile, and uh, I felt like, wow, this is amazing opportunity for me. Oh, I love. I'm absolutely happy to help, and I've spent time in India, and I absolutely have just fallen in love with the folks from India and how passionate you all are. Uh, and I'm always happy to help out because of that. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. So I thought to introduce you to my audience. Okay. So can you please introduce yourself to my audience? Absolutely. I'm more than happy to. My name is Stephen Rose. Um, I have been an IT professional for 25 years and have been at Microsoft for almost 12. Um, I owned my own consulting company for many years before coming to Microsoft. I was brought on board to launch Windows 7 for IT pros. I launched Windows 7, 8, and 10. I worked on um, the OneDrive team. I worked on the Surface team, and I now work on the Microsoft Teams team leading IT pro readiness worldwide. So I do a, uh, uh, I do a webcast called Inside Microsoft Teams. I do a lot on social media, and I speak at events all over the world. So it's awesome to be here today. So uh, where are you from? I live in C uh, Seattle, Washington, where the Microsoft headquarters is. So I'm working out of my home right now because of pandemic, but um, I work on the corporate headquarters where Sacha works and all of our other executives and see them all fairly often. So it's great. So 25 years is a very big time. So what, what is your motivation? And I think uh, you're very much uh, into IT. Oh, absolutely. I love helping people to figure out the puzzle. Uh, I came to Microsoft because I saw things that I didn't like how they were being done or didn't feel that the right information was being given to people. And they said, well, stop complaining about it and come on board and help us make a difference. And I've loved doing that. I've traveled to a ton of countries. I've been to India and Singapore and throughout Europe and Asia, South America. And I've met so many people who are just like, I've just been looking for a simple answer or someone to help guide me on where to do this. And I love being that person and connecting and helping so many people to be successful at their jobs. And that's what really gives me a lot of pride and makes me happy. So how, how is your uh, working experience with Bill Gates? Um, I, Bill was great when uh, he was here. Matter of fact, Bill was actually just before me. Bill had turned it over to Steve Ballmer when Steve was uh, our CEO. Bill was on the board. He still stops by. We still would see him fairly often, although he was very busy with the Bill Gates Foundation. And then uh, about, what, five years back, Satya Nadala came on board, uh, was already working for Microsoft for many years on our different engineering teams. And he was promoted and and he has done a fantastic job of turning the, not, not tur necessarily turning the company around, but helping us find our focus and really what's going to be important. And I always, one of the things that I really love about Microsoft was it was a company that originally had its heyday back in the 90s with Windows 95 and Windows 98. And then we sort of fell by the wayside and lost our way with things like Windows Phone and other things. And Satya came in and said, we're going to be focused in on the cloud. We're going to be focused in on software as a service and made that our focus. And we're now one of the most successful companies on the planet. I think we're the second most successful company on the planet after Apple. And we keep kind of going back and forth. But we have billions of people every day who use our software and services. And that's that's huge. That makes me feel very proud. So that is what my next question is. What is working for Microsoft to be in second position and which is having a big market all around the world? It is, um, you know, really taking time to understand those individual markets. We have offices in almost every major company on the planet. And what's important to us is we understand unique troubles and situations and needs and requirements for every single company. When I was in Mumbai, it was eye-opening for me to understand how people get Wi-Fi, how they work, where they work, how a horn is a way to tell all these different things to people when you're driving and what that means. And I learned about Kabaddi and all these phenomenal things that were just awesome to me. But it was great to really understand 
every day when somebody goes to work, what are the individual struggles that they run into based on infrastructure? And that's been a great thing is saying, hey, that may work really well in Canada or the United States or Germany, but that doesn't work well in Singapore or India or Brazil. And we have people that are dedicated to that, as well as people who take a look at things like disabilities and handicaps and language changes and all these things that are so important to us. So we're constantly looking at our products, how to make them better, but how to make them more personal for each person on the planet. And that uh, takes a lot of work. So you worked on different uh, uh, different platforms. So how is your experience? Because you are, you are understanding everything, the, the, the requirements and uh, where uh, the customers are, where, what the human needs are. So how mm -hmm. how how you put concentration and what uh, how you get uh, how you get to know the purpose of the people. Uh, it comes from me. I do virtual events. Uh, I have my show. I go to events around the world, and my whole thing is I will sit at the booth for eight to 10 hours a day. And anybody that wants to walk up and say, hey, Stephen, I have a question on Teams or I have a question, on... those are the conversations that I live for. I do user group events all over the world. I just did one for Germany last week. And my whole thing is not for me to talk about my product, but it's how are you using Teams? What could we be doing better? What features and functionality do we need? How do we make the product better for you? And it's listening to that. And then I sit down with engineering and I say, hey, here are some really key things for our audience. Here uh, you know, are things that we need to rethink. And then how we build our document pa documentation pages around that, which I do a lot of work with, how we build our learning content on MS Learn, which my team does, how we look at supportability governance, and we take that information and that's what drives a lot of our change in our products. It's not something we just decide this is a great feature. We've done a ton of research, but we also listen to everybody on those thoughts and what is going to make or not make that work for a segment of our market. So what are the major qualities that are working for Microsoft? What are the major qualities? Uh, you have to be passionate. The great thing is anybody can work for Microsoft. If you're passionate about what you do, whether you are a coder or developer or a marketer or evangelist or whatever, it's being super passionate about the platform and it's wanting to make a better product. How am I going to help everybody and make a better product that's going to solve problems? People who have that mindset are going to come into Microsoft and be incredibly successful. We have people from every corner of the globe that are working here, and we love that diversity. It's incredibly important that we have old and young, men and women, every language and every type of society coming in because someone like you has got a very different life experience than myself and you're going to see things differently so being able to sit in that room and share your experience is so important to how we build our products and services so if you're passionate that's number one most important obviously yes you you certainly want to have some experience if you're not working for a company we'll say you know what apps have you built how do you code? What languages? Have you gotten any certifications? Uh, you know, show us examples of apps that you've written or done. It's not that you have to have five, 10 years experience. It's just you have to be passionate and actually doing what you want to be doing here. So 25 years is a very big number. I'm sure uh, you might have uh, met a lot of professionals, have exchanged words with a lot of people and knowing their thoughts and understanding what works uh, uh, for the betterment of the company. So what uh, what what you learn personally? Um, it's important to listen. It's important to understand that someone else's pain, uh, things that aren't working is very real to them and very important and never to negate it, never to say, oh, well, that's that's just you or that's your situation that what so a problem that someone is running to is incredibly important to them and to be respectful of that and understand that and to ask questions. Um, I encourage anybody can reach out to me via Twitter and say hi and ask a question and I will respond and get back to you much the way that you found me, came out to Twitter, would you be on my show? Absolutely, I would love to. And I want people that watch this to reach out and say, I have a question or why does Microsoft do this or why don't we have this feature or that functionality or what are thoughts? That's how we learn. And that's how we engage. And I'm all about that. Anybody can get to us. It's not this. You have to be someone super important or super special to talk to us. Anybody can. And that's what makes our company great. 
So first thing that comes in the mind uh, when it comes to user friendly is Microsoft. Why? Because we do a ton of research and a ton of time. Um, we have labs where people sit and use our products. We take feedback. This button isn't working. We even do things where we'll put a piece of software in front of somebody and we'll track their eyes. What are they looking at? What are they clicking on? What doesn't make sense? And then there are symbols and languages um, where things, something could change. What means start or, or, or open to one person could mean close in another language. Even getting down to our emojis, where I had someone from India reach out and said, you know, we love the prayer emoji, the namaste emoji. Could you also alter some skin colors so we have one that looks more like us? Because it's, it's something we use all the time. Where here in the United States, this means pray very different. And if I put that after something that we're working on, that means I'm hoping it works where someone in India may be saying, thank you very much. And it's a sign of respect. So it's understanding those changes and how that works by having those conversations that I think leads us to be successful in those countries and languages and helps create software that is easy to use, but complex enough for people that want to do very difficult things within it. So connecting universally, you know, connecting with every country and uh, uh, with, with, with the only product, you know, that is amazing thing. You know, you need to understand every country, people, how they think, what what is uh, what they need. So how yeah. how how this research is going on? Uh, we're always doing research. We do research here at corporate headquarters. We do research in every country. And we also have uh, the ability for anybody to send feedback in our apps. We also take a look and see what features are being used. We, don't, we can't tell what features you're using, but we could say a lot of people are using this feature, but very few people are using this one. Let's try something. Sometimes when we roll out software, we do something called A-B testing. We give half the people one version of it and half the people another. This is usually during our betas or previews. And we see which one gets used more, or we may change a feature and see if that helps make that feature get used more. Maybe it's where it was at. Maybe it was, it was difficult to find or it wasn't clearly marked. So we're not just adding new features, we're always finding ways to improve and take the features that we have and make them better, whether that is an experience on mobile, on Mac, on iOS, on Android, Linux, which we now have a lot of software on Linux or on Windows, we're always evolving that based on the users. And that's something that you'll see every time when we do an update, oh, there's a new feature or a new icon, or now they brought to do into Outlook and that's going to do this or things like that. And then intelligence, um, AI is really big. Anticipating what you need. If we're going to do a meeting, it would put our chats and emails and correspondence that we've had that's related to our conversation in the meeting invite for me to look at before we meet so I know what we're going to be talking about. So it's those sort of aspects that are constantly helping us to help people and we see what get used and what doesn't. And then we're always tinkering with it. So in this uh, uh, experience with, with Microsoft, so you you might have, uh, th there are a lot of functionalities that have been added. So yes. you're, you're seeing with your eyes all these years. What do you say about this change, this gradual change? Well, uh, change is constant. And there are some people who go, but I like the product just the way that it is. But we work differently. We currently have four generations of people in the workforce today. We have older folks who everything they do is email. And we have folks like yourself where your preferred method of communication is chat. If I send an email to a coworker that is your age, they may not get to it for a day or two. Then they're gonna answer me. And if I have another question on top of that, I'm gonna send it back. We're gonna go back and forth. Well, they'll go, let's chat on Teams. We get on Teams, here's my question, great, here's the answer. I'm gonna pull someone else into the conversation. We've solved that in a matter of minutes because the newest generation of workers doesn't see a difference between this and a laptop. This is just a way to get to your content, your information, your apps in the cloud. So with so many people working differently, we have to go from I use a desktop app to I use a combination of the two to I was born in the cloud and use only web-based apps to, I want chat and I want full functionality in mobile because that's how I work. 
So it's understanding all of those and helping the folks who are over here to come down this way so that we can keep great talent like yourself engaged in using our products and take some of those older folks who are a little more resistant to change and say, hey, if you want to get great people to work for you, you've got to understand they're going to want to use Teams, they're going to want to use chat, they're going to want to use emojis and memes and have conversations right there and then move on to what's next. That email is telling somebody you want it, that there's food in the break room, not how we get important work done. So we're constantly looking at how people are working and giving them great ways to be able to work the way that they want to, to do, and to do it securely. So what is the perspective of Bill Gates? What is the perspective of Bill Gates? Bill loves the things that are done. He's not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of Microsoft anymore. That is all such a Nadella, but he is one of our key stakeholders. He's on our board. He watches what we do. He certainly gets to vote on the big stuff, but he's very much engaged in, you know, busy with the Bill Gates Foundation on making the world a better place and his great research around all the different communicable diseases and the work that he's done towards COVID. And his work at Microsoft has allowed him to do that. He gets briefed on what we're doing here, but he doesn't often have a lot of input unless it's something really groundbreaking or really amazing. And then that's a conversation that he and Sacha and Steve Ballmer and our top executives will have. It doesn't get down to folks like us. So I maybe see him once a year driving through here. He also, there's a hamburger place around the corner that he really likes that's near my house that I see him at every once in a while grabbing a hamburger. And he's a nice guy. He'll always say hi. So what worked for Microsoft to reach uh, even to the village? Say that again, I'm sorry. Uh, what worked for Microsoft uh, to reach the very smallest uh, uh, places in the, on, the, on the planet? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's persistence. I think it is understanding that, you know, every day, two out of three people on the planet are going to be using our software in some way, shape, or form to, um, you know, to, to connect, to work, to, to use it more than any other product, um, you know, on the planet. And that's part of our, you know, key statement is our job is to connect every person and, you know, and every device on the planet and allow people to, to do more with that and that's a really key piece and we're constantly looking at that um on how we can help people to achieve that and that just comes from conversations with our business leaders with companies and with individuals like yourself constantly so what do you say about productivity productivity is continually changing and your definition of productivity is very different than mine um but i think at its core there are three or four key things which is I want to make sure that you can work anywhere you want to work, from a cafe, from your house, from school, from a car, on any device that you want and be able to do it securely. That's at my core. If you want to use an iPhone or an Android phone or a tablet or your laptop, that you can do it, but know that all of your data is encrypted, secure, and that it can be managed. And that's really at the core and that you can go to any PC on the planet and access your data. You could go to any computer anywhere on the planet, log in with your account, and there's all your OneDrive content, all your photos, all your documents. You can work, make edits, make changes, leave that computer, and your work is done. And that's really the beauty of it is you don't even have to have a dedicated device. As long as you're connected somehow to the internet, you're connected to everybody and all your work and everything important. So where these uh, Microsoft Teams and uh... A one drive where these constructive thoughts are coming from this comes from our engineering team and it comes from our customers and it comes from individuals who give us feedback we have a great site called user voice where anybody can go in and make suggestions and ch for changes in our product we also have our tech community where we post blogs and articles and people comment and we read those so if you're commenting on twitter if you're commenting in our blogs, if you're on our support site, if you are on our user voice site, or if you click the give feedback buttons in our product and you give us feedback, we look at all that feedback. We aggregate it, we turn it into graphs and charts, and we take a look at what people are saying and we look at that going, is that something we need to do in our product? 
Now, it's important to understand that when you look at engineering, engineering is a finite amount of resources. Think of it like a piece of string. If we decide to do a new feature or fix something that we hadn't planned, we got to pull the string this way, which means something we were going to do might fall off. So it's always taking a look at, I like to call it evolution versus revolution. Evolution are features that we need to do to fix the product or to add some functionality to something's there or make something better, as opposed to new features that you haven't even thought of, that you didn't even maybe know that you needed in teams that we're gonna bring to the product to continue to make it better. So we're always balancing those two. And a lot of that comes from what you and your audience has to say about our product and us reading it and taking a look at that and making those decisions. So it's very, it's very driven by you and all of the folks out there. So connectivity, being in very top position, I, uh, it is, it is, uh, you are the example of uh, uh, the, 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 the connectivity, the kind of how the people, you are connected, uh, you are connecting everybody in the world. So what, what worked, what worked for, uh, can I say that Microsoft understood human psychology? That is why the reason they, they, they can understand computer psychology. Oh, absolutely. I think if you don't understand human beings and how we work, why we work, and how we prioritize things, it's absolutely at the core. We need to understand that before we can build anything. It's absolutely based on your problem may not seem like a big problem to me, but it's important to you. And I need to understand that. I need to empathize with it. And I need to understand your culture, your environment, your language, your infrastructure, what is available, what isn't. That's one of the reasons why we're doing a lot of programs on bringing broadband, especially for education to places that don't have it around the world. And a lot of programs that we're doing to help raise the quality of human life and to get everybody more equal so that people can use the products and services the way that they want, but we wanna understand how that's different for every person. And absolutely understanding psychology and sociology um, and economics are a huge part of that. And what works in one part of the world does not work in another, and we know that. So at last, la uh, last question is, have you seen any videos of mine on YouTube? I have, I checked you out and I was very impressed. You have some great stuff. You've interviewed some really great people. And I think you are incredibly brave for just reaching out to these people and saying yes. And I'm gonna imagine you're surprised most of the time when they say, sure, I would love to. And you are a perfect example of if you don't just go to somebody who you look up to or that has a job that you have, wanna have or something that you want and say, I love your car, I like your show, I love your job. How did you get that? That they're usually willing to share that and help you to get to that point. Uh, am I, I, I mean, I'm on I'm uh, right track to come into Microsoft in future? I think you are. I think you should definitely look at jobs that excite you. And if you don't get that job, ask, what am I missing? And if they say, all you need is this, then focus in on that. But we would love to see you on campus as one of our developers, one of our marketers, one of our partners working for someday. We would love to see you here. And when you come here, I will buy you lunch. Thank you, sir. Or dinner, sir. maybe both. Uh, maybe lunch or dinner, maybe both. We'll see. Thank you very much, sir. It's a very big thing for me in my life. This is one of the biggest achievements in my life. Having you on my show, you gave me a 30 minute time. I think I completed that. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk with you and ask, ask you a few questions. Uh, as an IT person who did masters in software engineering, I feel very proud to say that I did an uh, interview uh, with, a, with a person who is uh, uh, into IT for 25 years and who is working in Microsoft. Thank you very much well, again. No, thank you. And if people want to reach out to me, they can find me on at Stephen L. Rose. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-N-L Rose on Twitter. Or check out my show at aka.ms slash inside MS Teams. And I am happy to chat with anybody and good luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you here at some point. Yeah, definitely. I'll I'll put the links in the description of this video on YouTube. People who finds our video, they they will they will they will go through the links. That can sounds I, awesome. Can I put this video and audio clip on my YouTube channel, social media? Absolutely, internet, please do, and text me the link, and I will I will promote it and push it out on my Twitter feed as well. Thank you very much, sir. See you soon again. You are very very welcome. Take care. Have a good day or a good evening. Good evening. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Awesome. 
Excellent. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.